Not all Wi-Fi hacking scripts are easy for beginners to get started with. In fact, some require arguments that are a little complicated or otherwise not straightforward for people who are just starting out. Today, we'll explore a script that's so easy you can begin by just typing a single character as we go through the lazy script on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. While there are always new Wi-Fi hacking tools coming out, the majority of them actually rely on a couple pretty simple underlying attacks that have been established for quite some time. Now the value in these scripts is actually more UI or UX, which is user experience, and making sure that the layout for these tools is more friendly for beginners or more easy to use. Now there are attempts at this like Ergetin that are more specifically focused on Wi-Fi hacking, which bring together a lot of different tools in a friendly and easy way to attack. We'll explore another one, which is the lazy script, which you can access by just typing L once it's installed. Now, this is kind of best seen as part package manager and part a uh, series of tools that can be used in conjunction to find out things like your local IP address, ensure that your MAC address has been changed successfully if you're randomizing it, and even go on to scan a network with an ARP scan and then use a more advanced tool like Puppy just by typing install. Anything you want to use that isn't installed, you can just select it and then type installed. And if you're connected to the internet, it only takes a couple of minutes to set up even something like the Metasploit framework to be able to use through the lazy script. Now it's kind of nice because for a beginner, you get like a guided tour of all the different tools you should maybe consider because all of these are curated for what's the, what the best tools are for attacking a wireless network, an ethernet network, or LAN, or just networks in general. Now, in order to get started, you'll need Kali Linux, and you'll need to make sure that it's fully updated because a lot of the tools that this relies on will be broken if they're using an older version that isn't compatible. Once you've updated Kali Linux, you'll need to just download the script, which we'll show you how to do, and that's all you need to begin. To get started using the lazy script, we can go to the GitHub repository here. Now we can follow the instructions, but we can also take a look at how many tools are actually uh, installed along with this. Now, not all these will be installed by default, but you can always go into the particular part of the package that has these listed and just type install in order to install them. Now, to get started with this, we'll go ahead and copy the instructions here. We'll first type CD, and then let me go back to my terminal, paste git clone, and then the address for the git repository. And then once it gets all that, we'll do cd ls script, uh, type ls to list, and then we can see the install.sh. So we're going to make that executable by typing chmod plus x and then install.sh. Then finally we'll type period slash install.sh. Now this should go ahead and install everything that we will need, and it'll go through the list of different options and various uh, packages this will need in order to work successfully. Uh, and here it'll ask you if you're updating or installing. In this case, we are installing, so type I. I said I, only use one time, okay. All right, so sometimes the script will yell at you, which is okay. Um, it's still in development, so you have to be a little bit uh, tolerant of its quirks sometimes. For example, it will now ask you to accept the terms of use, and if you do anything except type yes in all caps, it will now cause you some problems by refusing to let you continue. Uh, sometimes you will then type yes, and if you don't do it in all caps, it'll refuse to accept the next all caps yes, so please just make sure you type all caps yes. And this is a great opportunity to point out that what it says is true. Uh, if you are using this against a network that you do not own or have permission to audit, then that could be a crime depending on where you are, so make sure you have permission before doing any of the tools that are included in this uh, set of tools. 
So next we'll need to enter the name of the wireless interface that we're going to use. Now you can get into a little bit of trouble here because if you're using another network interface, well this script tries to be a little bit more automatic and helpful, but sometimes it can actually be unhelpful in that if you switch to a different interface, uh, it just will simply stop working. Now in this case, I'm going to put in a TP-Link network adapter in just a little bit, but for now to make sure I can install things and that everything is working fine, I'm going to enter the name of the interface I'm using right now, which is WLAN0. So then it'll ask me what my system calls my, uh, my interface when it's in monitor mode, which in this case is WLAN0 mod. And then finally it'll ask for my uh, Ethernet uh, connection, which is ETH0. Now, if you want to see these for yourself, you can open a new terminal window and type ifconfig, and it should show you all these interfaces and what they're called. Now, if you want to change these, as it says here, you can type interface at any time, which we will be doing in a little bit, but we'll press uh, enter to continue. We'll press any key to continue. And now we can see we are in lazy script. So that did not require very much setup at all. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize this other window that it opened in the beginning when we were installing it. And I'll also minimize the browser window. So now we have lazy script. We can see this is all pretty much ready to go. And the first thing you'll notice is that we can do a bunch of cool local networking stuff. So we can just by typing L, see the local IP and gateway, which is really helpful if we want to do a scan of the uh, local IP addresses. Uh, we can type if to do if config and see all that information about our network interfaces here. We can uh, also view our current MAC address with the number eight um, on any of the interfaces that we've selected. So here we can type uh, one and you can see that two has a red, uh, red color on the number uh, to let you know that it's currently not found because our interface is in manage mode, not monitor mode. So here we can see the MAC address of the device we selected, and that lets us know if we have uh, chosen to randomize it, if that has actually worked. Now you can see there's a lot of different things here, and we can also move on to doing things like scanning by just typing scan, which will perform an ARP scan. So here you can see we actually didn't have it initially, and it's going to go ahead and not only install ARP scan, but then boom, go ahead and do a scan of the network and return with everything that it finds. So we can now go back and see there are a lot of different tools that are also prepackaged. By typing nine, we can jump into these and see, let's go with Wi-Fi tools, which is option number one. Now you can see the standard installation of Kali does have a, a fair amount of the tools, but there's still a lot that it doesn't have. So I wanna show you how easy it is to get something um, that you want in order to uh, use it successfully through this tool. So you, we will use, let's say, router exploit, which we've covered fairly recently. So this is option number 21. So you can see the tool is not installed. We can just type install. And just like that, it'll go ahead and download this tool for us and we'll be able to use it through the uh, lazy script. Now that, it's, that it is done, we should be able to go back and see that we can now use option 21 to use router exploit through the lazy script interface. So in this case, we'll press B to go back and then B to go back one more time. And I want to show you some actual functionality from lazy script in order for us to be able to hack a nearby wireless network. In this case, a Verizon hotspot. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the TP link into my computer. And now that that's done, I need to adjust the script in order to use the new network interface I've added. Now I can type IF and it'll show me that now I have WLAN 1. And by going to uh, the interface command, I can select the current, um, I can see that the current wireless interface is WLAN 0 and WLAN 0 MON, which I no longer want. So we want to change it. So we'll type Y for yes, type WLAN 1 and then WLAN 1 MON. And we'll use the same uh, ethernet address, which is ETH0. So with this all set, we can go ahead and move on to actually attempting to grab a handshake for a network, which is a pretty good test to see how effective this script is. It's some basic uh, Wi-Fi hacking. So let's go ahead and select option number 10, which is handshake. And we'll want to enable monitor mode, which we can do by selecting Y. 
So that'll kill services. And then once we've shut down things like uh, the uh, access point monitor, we can move into a new terminal window here. And we can start by selecting option one to scan the local area and find a target for us to attack. So we'll press one. And then this also gives us the option to select which channel we want to scan on, or we can just press return in order to scan on all of them. So we'll do that. So we will, oh, I see the network we're looking for. So we'll scan for a second and then press control C in order to end the scan. And we'll see a nice display here of the power of all the networks around us along with a MAC address and whether or not a client was discovered. So here we're looking for number 14, which is Google Star Borks. And once we've selected that, uh, we're going to indicate that we have no file for a handshake so far. And here we have a list of all the different attacks that we can do against this network. Now we can either uh, deauth a specific client, we can deauth everyone, or we can deauth everyone periodically. Now we're going to select option one to just deauth all. And here you can see in the second window, we're listening for a handshake. So I will select option one and we're going to select zero for an infinite number of deauths to send. And as you can see, a window will open here and hopefully deauth our client and force them to reconnect. There you are. We can see we just got a WPA handshake and that only took about 42 seconds in this script. So we'll go ahead and end the deauth attack. We will press zero to exit from this smaller script. And then we will press control C to indicate that we are done with this capture session. Now we're going to, it asks us uh, start capturing on a file, which I don't know what that means, but I'm assuming it means do we want to save the file? So we'll type Y and then it'll ask us to name the handshake file. So we will say test capture. So now we've gone ahead and saved that capture. Uh, so we have successfully demonstrated that we can get the script set up and in a matter of 42 seconds, grab our first WPA handshake. Now the next step for that would be to go ahead and crack it, which there are some suites available to do that in the script. But for now, that's going to be our demonstration on how to set up the lazy script and use it to not only install new tools, but also use it to grab a WPA handshake in a matter of seconds. The Lazy Script is a fantastic tool for beginners who are interested in learning about some of the most powerful and relevant network attacks. But it's worth noting that if you operate a network at home, pretty much anyone, no matter how incompetent, can get started using tools like this to execute some of these same tactics. Now, if you have maybe let your network security lag a little bit, it's worth checking out our last video on the five most common Wi-Fi hacking techniques and the ways to defend against them, because the lazy script covers most of these pretty nicely with its default functions. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you're a viewer in the United States, have a fantastic 4th of July. We'll see you next time.